Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Each month, the Mayor and City Manager review data concerning one of the goal areas in the City's five-year citywide business plan. This month, Casey's staff meeting focused on customer service and communications. I, I don't get the, uh, the decline uh, over the last, what looks like the last three years regarding the availability of information when it seems to me that we're doing more to push out more information constantly. Right. One of the things we hear in 311 isn't as much specific when is leaf and brush or what is my trash day. We've seen a little bit of decline in that. What we get are more specific, what's going on in front of my house, what's going on in this particular area. They see, they see work or they see some event and they don't know what it is related to. Okay. You, and you, I'd be interested to know whether or not those two things marry up whether that's what's being addressed by the responses on the availability mm -hmm. uh, is things that are really so individual specific. I would also wonder, I know that there definitely has been probably a decline over time in the amount of physical materials mailed to homes because of the cost. Um, so but if you look at the number of various city programs that used to mail constantly and because uh, that's so expensive, they're not doing that as much, and it has shifted to a lot of the, the electronic communication. That, that might be something that is still driving that because there are still so many people who still want something in the mail, and they feel like they're not being communicated with unless they see that in their mailbox. In addition to delivering statistical information based on resident surveys, the Office of City Communications also reported on numerous creative ways that the public has been engaged recently. That includes an event that was held in the Crossroads last summer, which we called the Art of Data. This was an innovative art exhibit that provided attendees with a unique visual perspective on the data the city uses to drive decisions and to make improvements throughout Kansas City. Statistical numbers and pie charts were transformed into unique artistic visions by several local artists. That art was on display at the Arts KC Gallery on Southwest Boulevard. If you have your own ideas as to how the city might engage its citizens more effectively, or you would like to tell us how you prefer to receive information about city news and programs, send us an email at communications at kcmo.org or tweet us at KCMO. Bob Bennett, a 25-year Army veteran, started this month as the city's new chief innovation officer. He says one of his first projects will be to apply for a U.S. Department of Transportation grant beyond traffic, which aims to evolutionize transportation to include smart technologies like driverless vehicles, car sharing, and pop-up bus services. Well, one of the reasons we have a chief innovation officer is the uh, quick development of technologies. Uh, here in Kansas City alone, we're at the leading edge of uh, both application developments that people use on their cell phones and their internet, whatever else they have, but also in, in the ways that they interact with the water company and the way they interact with uh, other human beings. Uh, right now, that technology is evolving exponentially. Uh, so by being able to bring in a CIO who can harness that activity and then actually integrate it into our city processes, actually integrate it into the day-to-day -day lifestyle uh, of our citizenry. Snow operations aren't just a job for the winter for the public works staff. Improving how city crews respond to and manage snow events is a year-round effort. Uh, the city does have a GPS system that tracks all of our trucks so we'll know exactly where they are at any given time and over the last year we've been able to work on our trucks and the GPS to have the plow sensors working um, so that the, the map is much better now and, and more real time. Um, a plow sensor um, is just a, is, is exactly what it sounds like. There is a small sensor on our plow uh, that when it is down, it'll show that the plow is down, and when, when the plow comes back up, then it shows the plow is up. So we'll know whether the streets, uh, while the truck's driving down the street, whether it's plowing or just driving. So once the citizens log in, they'll be able to see whether their streets have been plowed or not and how long ago. All of the streets that are colored yellow um, have been plowed in the last eight hours. Any streets that are colored blue have been plowed within between 8 and 16 hours, and streets that are colored red were plowed more than 16 hours ago. 
And don't forget, shoveling sidewalks is the responsibility of property owners. Aside from being required by city ordinance, we encourage people to clear sidewalks in both residential and business areas. It's the neighborly thing to do. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Good morning and uh, welcome to the Skywalk Memorial Plaza. Uh, just over 34 years ago, about 1,500 people uh, gathered at the then Hyatt Regency Hotel right across the street from us here today. Uh, they gathered there for a Friday night tea dance. They were looking forward to a night of music, dancing, uh, fun with family and friends. <clears throat> and instead that night turned into disaster and tragedy. 25 years later, a small group of people uh, sat down and began to discuss the possibility of a memorial to the events of that night. Uh, today, with patience, faith, determination, and your help, we've made that possibility a reality. He needs no introduction, but uh, former Mayor uh, Dick Burke. Thank you. I'll be very brief, but this is a very important day, and I'm uh, fortunate to partic participate in it. We all know that night 34 years ago was something quite unique and unusual, and many, many people had played such a positive role in, in the course of that evening and the days after. As Brett mentioned, I was the first officer dispatched to the scene of the Skywalk collapse that evening. The hotel was in my patrol area. When I arrived at the scene, there was nothing in the academy training that could have prepared me or any other first responder that would, that witness, that would be witnessed that evening. However, I've never been more proud to be part of a team of first responders that acted as true professionals that evening in the weeks and in the months to follow. What I hope that we will always remember and what I believe that we have seen in recent days and years is how this city comes together in times of sorrow and in times of joy. How our emergency personnel, our first responders respond to situations like this time and time and time again. How our doctors, our nurses, our healthcare people react and respond and dedicate themselves to helping those in need of their services in times like this. How dozens of fire trucks and ambulances and police vehicles respond and help to do everything that they can. How people in hardware stores and grocery stores and all sorts of other types of businesses respond by offering whatever help they can, whether it's the form of food, or whether it's in the form of money to help everybody in this community lives for each other. We've seen it, we do it, this was a prime example of it. I think some people in other cities might be surprised at the way that we respond to things in this city, but I'm not. It's expected, it's ingrained in us. That's who we are. We come together when we're needed. We come together to help those who need our help. We come together to celebrate we come together on days like this to remember the things that led us to be here. Please enjoy this, and every time you pass it, whether on foot or by car, and look at it, we'll remember what happened 34 years ago in this city. Thank you all very much. This playful three-year-old is one lucky dog. Mojave, a pit bull mix, was rescued by Aaron Dawkins, who is a special investigator with Animal Health and Public Safety. Initially, you know, the dog didn't want to come up to me, so I went back to the truck, you know, brought the trap, had a can of food, and, you know, by the time I opened the can of food, you know, he just ran right up to me, so I didn't even have to set the trap. The city of Kansas City, Missouri is known for an innovative program that uses hidden cameras to track down people who illegally dump trash in neighborhoods. 
This time, those cameras caught these pictures of someone dumping the dog and Mojave running after the SUV as it drove away. Well, the camera's motion sensitive. Uh, it'll take a picture as long as there's motion about every five seconds. Alan Ashurst is a codes enforcement officer in the Neighborhood Preservation Division. He places and monitors the cameras. When he saw the photos, he immediately called Animal Health and Public Safety. It became a unique opportunity for two different divisions to work together to solve a problem and to rescue this dog. The animal control officer said, look, I finished these pictures and today, as of this morning at 10 a.m., that dog is still in, in the area and I'm going to go go out there and see if I can find him. And I said, well, I'll meet you there. And we weren't there 30 minutes before we were able to find the dog. And Mojave, he was adopted in just one day. In recognition of the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday on Monday, January 18th, City Hall and other city offices will be closed. Curbside trash and recycling pickup will also be delayed one day throughout the week. For example, residents who usually have Monday collection will receive that service on Tuesday, and residents who usually have Friday collection will receive it on Saturday. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, Go to kcmo.gov and search channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel where you'll be able to view many of our programs on demand. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week and a great 2016.